Boris Johnson has been moved into the ICU um, in, in hospital, so into the intensive care unit. I'm going to read out the number 10 statement. Since Sunday evening, the Prime Minister has been under the care of doctors at St. Thomas's Hospital in London after being admitted with persistent symptoms of coronavirus. Over the course of this afternoon, the condition of the Prime Minister has worsened and, on the advice of his medical team, he has been moved to the intensive care unit at the hospital. The PM has asked Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab, who is the first Secretary of State, to deputise for him where necessary. The PM is receiving excellent care and thanks all NHS staff for their hard work and dedication. Um, and the PMs, this is not in their statement, but also brief, the PM is understood to be conscious um, and was moved an hour and a half ago as a precaution in case he needs ventilation. I should probably go to you first, Lara, as a doctor. <laughs> Um, how yeah. should we how should we interpret this is does this mean it's necessarily you know very serious or could this how, how much do you accept that this would be a precautionary measure so i think it could be um i mean i think what they know about coronavirus patients now is that they can deteriorate quite rapidly obviously saw the the prime minister like clapping on the streets and then now he's in hospital and icu so that's a bit um you know if he's conscious that means he's probably not being ventilated yet um if people's oxygen requirements are going up quite high, then they tend to take them to, to ICU to preempt the deterioration so they can best support them. But obviously we know people are going to the ICU and coming out and recovering. So um, they might be taking extra precautions uh, based on that. I'm sure he's getting very close monitoring. Um, but yeah, it, it must be very scary. Like having seen patients on ICU, like you, you've got to have a whole human side to it really. Like it's, it's not a nice place to be. Um, it's a very intense place to be, one-on-one um, -on -one sort of nursing, and obviously he's got like a pregnant partner, so it's a bit, very, very kind of shocking news. But um, yeah, now Dominic Robb's in charge. Great. Mm. What does it mean? Maybe you could explain sort of to our audience what it means to be moved into ICU, because there's a lot of terms that we've sort of instantly become, you know, comfortable. Just say, oh, they're in ICU. Oh, it's a vent. Everyone's learnt the, the lingo, which is that there's an intensive care unit, which is where you go and it's serious. And there's a ventilator, which is what you might need if it's serious. But I think there's, you know, there's potentially stages of care in, in intensive care unit and what practically happens that at least I'm not particularly clear about. So if, if what would be happening to, to, to someone who's just been sent to, to ICU? So in in normal cases, I think ICU is normally if you're one or two of your organs need support. So whether that's your heart needs support through giving adrenaline or your lungs through ventilation or your kidneys through renal replacement therapy. Um, in in terms of coronavirus patients, it's it's preempting, I guess, the the deterioration and then needing to be on a ventilator and in obviously serious cases um then it can lead to multi-organ failure so um they can support your other organs there icu and I, or itu it's a, the same thing i think um <laughs> i'm very wary i'm a very junior doctor at this thing mm. um and basically it's one-to-one -one nursing care you know you're getting that you're getting all your observations um done uh you know every 15 minutes or every hour um, so they can monitor you for deterioration and you have the healthcare staff close, whereas you can't have that on a ward. You're not going to necessarily see staff that quickly. So that's basically it. Aaron, um, I suppose it's, it's fairly unprecedented in the middle of a, you know, a, a national crisis where the government has more decisions to make than ever. Um, I, I don't really like it when, you know, Laura Coinsberg is, Laura is, is on the TV saying this is unprecedented and the government are having to make unprecedented decisions and sort of poses that as, as political analysis. But it is sort of undeniable that the government are, are under intense pressure at this point. So it is quite unprecedented for in a moment like that um, <clears throat> for a, a leader to be taken out of action and, and be in intensive care. Or is well, it not? No, it's not. Um, Churchill had pneumonia twice during the Second World War. Oh, interesting. Uh, I didn't know that. Um, I mean, look, uh, FDR, Franklin Roosevelt, couldn't use his legs for most of his full terms as US president. Mm. Um, I'm trying to think of more recently in Britain. Uh, ooh, who was it? Was it, wasn't it Macmillan? Did it was Anthony, have... Anthony <laughs> Eden was very sick, but then he was also a terrible prime minister. Uh, so, yeah, there, there are a few Wasn't examples. JF, I thought JFK was supposed to be a bit, have a sort of like delusional fever when the Bay of Pigs was launched. And that was yeah. sort of one of JFK, the, well, the yeah, explanations I mean, as to why it was a flop. Yeah. I mean, that, that that's one thing. I mean, but in, in terms of, a, 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 a you know, a decent comparison to this, yes, we were at war in the Second World War. Churchill had pneumonia twice, which may be what Boris Johnson has right now. 
Um, and yeah, it's 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 obviously best wishes to him. Hope he recovers quickly. But what's interesting is the line that was coming out of Downing Street yesterday was, "It's totally normal. It's just a checkup." Right now, hospital beds are gold dust. Right, unless it's absolutely urgent, people aren't going to hospital. So for the prime minister to be going to hospital indicated it was very serious. Oh, he's just staying in for tests, etc. Given capacity in the NHS is stretched right now, that was completely counterintuitive. And so my, my suspicions were that, that was just nonsense, and that actually was probably in a bit of trouble. Uh, if you follow Lewis Goodall on Twitter, great journalist at BBC Newsnight. He's a healthy skeptic, you know, he's not a conspiracy theorist. Uh, and he was kind of insinuating the same thing. Uh, and it's it's troubling that the media and 10 Downing Street wouldn't even be relaying accurate information about the prime minister's health. You know, they were saying until a few hours ago, he's leading the government. And now he's in ICU. Now, I'm not saying this to make sort of political capital out of it, but it does reveal uh, a certain modus operandi with regards to relaying information to the general public in the context of the coronavirus pandemic, uh, which often isn't particularly truthful. Uh, and that's concerning because people need to be in receipt of the facts. Uh, the worse this gets and the longer it goes on. There's a particularly, I suppose, strange element to, and I mean, we often talk about how the media isn't as critical as it, as it needs to be in, in ordinary times, but there is something about coronavirus um, which has sort of put the media into national emergency mode um, as you know, they would in a war, which again we'd we'd be incredibly critical of. Where it, it seems like they do especially feel their role as one of reassuring the public um, and getting the messages across that the government wants to get across, and they even more explicitly than usual sort of see themselves as one arm of governance as opposed to, you know, uh, the fifth estate that's meant to hold power to account. They've now become a sort of leave, lever for crowd management. Um, as it were, I suppose we should talk quickly about, you know, Brab is deputizing for for Boris Johnson. So at this point, he is, um, you know, he's standing in as prime minister. I'm I'm somewhat dubious if that makes him actually the most powerful person in Downing Street at the moment. I, I feel like he's not necessarily going to be the one who now makes the final decision, as it were. It doesn't seem like he's been the most influential person during this coronavirus crisis. He gave the the press briefing. Um, today, um, you know, the 5 p.m. one, and I have to say, he he seemed very awkward to me. Um, it didn't seem like he was particularly confident, sort of, and on top of his brief when it came to coronavirus. So I, I'm not really sure how that will how that will play out. Any big thoughts on Rob taking over for a while? He's so right wing, isn't he? He is very right wing. About my only thought, he's written quite a lot of, you know, libertarian stuff. He's kind of, yeah, he's a Randian. He's like Sajid Javid, you know. His whole ideology is um, the productive side of the economy is the private sector. Yeah. The extractive side, the useless parasitic side of the economy is basically all the jobs right now that are keeping society mm -hmm. ticking over. Uh, you know, refuse collection, uh, hospital workers, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, the upside down, topsy-turvy economy that we have where the most important people get paid the least uh, is kind of, you know, the the right-wing libertarian utopia that people like Dominic Rabb sort of uh, really aspire for this country to, to, to live up to. You know, he was one of the people involved in the Britannia Unchained uh, book, uh, and that is his politics. Mm -hmm.